Good morning, Sandals Church. Man, I'm glad you guys are here today. Super excited. How many of you guys ever done something and you just go like, why did I do that? You ever done that? Like, what, what, what was I thinking? Was I thinking? Why did I think that? Like, a lot of us, man, we do things and we don't know why we do what we do. And so we're in a series at Sandals Church called You, and that's what we're trying to uncover. What's driving you? What's motivating you? Why do you do what you do? Why do you do those things that drive you crazy? Like, you know you don't want the outcome, but you do it anyways. Why do you find yourself there? So we're in this series called You, where each week we're looking at nine personality styles. And so we started with the one, the reformer. They can see the way the world should be. And so, man, at at their best, they make everything better. At their worst, they should on themselves, others, and God. And I said should, so just know that that's what I said, should. Then last week when we looked at the two, they're our helpers, and at their best, man, they serve, they love us, they take care of us. At their worst, they become prideful and resentful because they serve and and care for all of us. And so this week, we're going to look at the three, and I'm going to try to be delicate because I'm a three. And just so you know, there are some personality types that if you love one or you know one, you need to wear a helmet, and, and a three is one of those personality types. So if you're married to a three... You're going to understand why you're bruised and why you're hurting, because as a three, man, we're just so, so driven. And we're going to look at the motivation of the three today. And my prayer is that if you are a three, you would better understand yourself. And if you know a three, you would have more compassion for just literally the struggle that is every day in their life. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we pray, Lord, that you would teach us about ourselves. God, Lord, that we would Look at the three type and just have compassion and mercy, Lord, for the struggle that is the achiever. God, I pray that we would see their beauty, that we would see the wonder of how you've created them, God, and we would have compassion for them as they live out their giftedness to make this world a better place. Lord, teach us about ourselves. We pray this today in Christ's name, amen. We're gonna take a look at a very, very busy three, and this is what threes are. They're constantly busy. They're, they're thinking about the future. They're always in a rush. Um, and so let's take a look at this story. It says, as Jesus was starting on his way to Jerusalem, underline this, a man came running. Threes are always running. They got places to go. They got things to do. They got to make stuff happen. Threes feel like life is too short. This is how you know if you have a three and it's a child of yours. Your three-year-old, even when they're five, will say, who's going to take over Sandals Church when Pastor Matt dies? And you're like, why, are you going to kill him? No, I just want to know where my future lies. So a three wants to be president of the United States. A three wants to be a pastor. A three wants to be a mayor. A three wants to be successful at all costs. It's the thing that matters. They want to make a difference. And so here's this three. He comes running up to him. He kneels down and he says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, underline that. Here's what he's really asking. How do I win? How do I win? Just know this. If you have a three in your life, playing Uno with a three is dangerous because a three wants to win. A three needs to win. Even if you're playing grandma, she needs to know her place, right? So just know this. With a three, threes want to win. The three mantra is if you're not cheating, you're not trying hard enough, right? That's the three. It's all about the victory. Now, just know this. In America... America is the home of the brave and the what? No, it's the land of the three. That's what it is. It's not the land of the free. It's the land of the three. In America, it's win or die. How many of you guys ever watched Super Bowl? Even if it's just one time, watch Super Bowl. You ever seen the team that comes in second? (laughs) They're crying. It's like, wait a minute. You just played in the Super Bowl. We will never even go to the Super Bowl. We can't even afford a ticket for the Super Bowl. You came in second, and what do Americans do? Cry and quit. Because it's first or bust. Home of the brave, land of the three, right? We want to win. It's not enough in America to be a billionaire. We actually rank them. Did you know that? Forbes magazine every year ranks the wealthiest Americans. And they watch each other. Oh, you made a billion dollars this year. Congratulations, well, I made 10. That's literally America. So America is the land of the three. You gotta be successful. You gotta achieve. You gotta strive. You gotta be the best no matter what. And so threes feel very at home in America and very miserable, and we'll talk about why. 
So what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? So here's the question. Not only am I winning at life, Jesus, I want to know how to win in the next life. So Jesus does a Jedi mind trick where he's going to get to the heart of the issue rather than the question that's asked. He says, why do you call me good? Jesus asked. He says, only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. If you don't know the commandments, you might want to write these down. Here's a good place to start. Don't murder. Like if you were thinking about killing somebody this week, God says, don't do that. They're not called the 10 suggestions. They're called the 10 commandments, right? Don't murder. Next one, you must not commit adultery. Some of you don't know what adultery is. It's not, you've, you've become an awesome adult. That's not what it means. It doesn't mean you've mastered adulthood. What it means is you cheated on your spouse or you cheated with someone else's spouse. Don't do that, the Bible says. Some of you didn't know that, so write that down. Next, you shouldn't steal. Don't steal, especially if you're a three. <laughs> don't steal. Next, you must not testify falsely. If you're a three, that's gonna be uncomfortable as we talk about your core sin. Next, you must not cheat on anyone. Ah, that ruins monopoly, right? Next, you gotta honor your mother and your father. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. I'm a three. Since I came out of the womb, I have been successful at everything I do. Looking at the man, Jesus felt, and this is interesting for the three, circle this word, genuine. This is something that's hard for a three. It's hard for the three to be real. It's hard for the three to be authentic. It's hard for the three to be genuine. And notice here, Jesus feels genuine love for him. Why does he care about the three? Because threes change the world. They drive us crazy, but they change the world. And so this man has the potential to change the world. And we'll talk about that in a second. He says, there's one thing you still haven't done, right? Because threes are doing, what do I gotta do? What do I gotta do? What do I gotta do? What do I gotta do to be successful? Jesus says, there's only one thing. Imagine that. If Jesus just told you the one thing you needed to do. He says, there's one thing you haven't done. He says, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor. And then you'll have treasure in heaven. Now, some of you are like, man, that's easy. Yeah, that's because you're a college student and you're broke. <laughs> I always love college students. Man, Jesus, I'll give you everything. You can have everything in my pocket and my debt. I will follow you. But listen. Let's say you've worked really hard. Let's say you've made some money. Let's say you bought some homes. You have a portfolio. You have some retirement. Let's say you've done well in life because you've tried hard in life. This makes this calling way, way different. It becomes difficult. He says, go and sell all your money and give it to the poor. Sell all your possessions, give it to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven. Then he says, come and follow me. At this, the man's face fell and he went away sad because he had many possessions. Listen, if you're a three, you don't have possessions. Your possessions possess you. Because the three defines themselves based upon the clothes we wear, the car we drive, the house we live in. The three is all about image. All about image. I gotta look successful. I gotta seem successful. And so everything around me has to make me look good. So if you're a three, you don't just want a wife, you want a trophy wife right? Because she's got to make you look good. You are very, very image conscious. From the time that you were little, you cared about the clothes you wore. Man, when I was a kid, I would try to figure out how to put a fake label on my clothes. <laughs> I'm serious, man. My heart was Nordstrom, but my mom's budget was Kmart, right? You know what I'm saying? It was just, I was like, mom, this is, this is killing my style. But the man's face fell and he went away sad because he had a lot of stuff. How sad is this if you're a three, if you inherit the whole world and yet forfeit your soul? Listen to me, if you're a three, when you die, you leave it all. None of it goes with you. The only thing in heaven is what you've invested in heaven. That's it. Jesus says, sell all that you have, then you'll have treasure in heaven. Jesus later would say, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Jesus looked around and he said to his disciples how hard it is for the rich to inherit the kingdom of God. Underline these words, this amazed them. Why? Because in the ancient world, here's what everybody thought. If you're rich, you're blessed. 
If you're rich, God loved you. If you're rich in this life, in the ancient world, they thought, surely you'll be rich in the next life. And Jesus completely flips that upside down. He says, not only will the rich not get into heaven, it is impossible for them to do so. Jesus said, dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And you say, what on earth does that mean? Let me just be honest with you. No one knows what that means. Now, I know some of you have been to church and you've heard amazing sermons about this gate in Jerusalem that was called the camel's gate. I've been to Jerusalem. There's no camel's gate. We don't know what Jesus meant except for the fact he tells us what it meant. It means it's impossible. You can't get there on your own. The disciples were astounded. They said, then who in the world can be saved, they asked. I love this. Jesus looked at them, circle this word, and remember this next time you and I talk. People are always so intimidated when we talk. This is what my kids say. Dad, you can't stare into people's soul when you talk. I'm an intense talker. That's how God made me. Why? Because I'm like Jesus. Look what Jesus says. He looked at them intently. It's not my fault. I have ADD. If I don't look at your face, I can't hear your words. But it's amazing, man. I look at people and they're like, oh, this is weird. Oh. <laughs> I've only met one person in the world who talks like I do. President, Vice President Mike Pence. He stared into my soul. I stared back because I'm a three. I have to win. <laughs> we had a stare down in the White House. It was awkward. It really happened. I'm just, just kidding. My wife's like, look away, look away. I'm like, I can't, I'm a three. <laughs> Jesus looked at them intently. He said, humanly speaking, it's impossible. Do you know that many of you don't believe this? You don't believe that it's impossible for you to earn your way to heaven? And you know why I know you don't believe this? Because you don't share your faith. You don't share your faith in Christ with your Hindu friends, with your Muslim friends, with your atheist friends. You don't share your faith in Christ with your dumb friends who believe they're good enough to get into heaven on their own. You don't share your faith because you believe that there's some other way other than Jesus for people to get to heaven. A lot of people believe that. People tell me all the time, well, I believe I'm a good person, so I'll get into heaven. You know what the problem with that is? When people say that, when people believe that, they're comparing themselves to the idiots they know. Well, I'm pretty good. Look around. Look at these people. Not as bad as them. Well, show me the verse in the Bible where it says they're the standard. A couple years ago, I was getting ready to do my first Ironman event. And if you don't know what that is, it's an event for stupid people. Seriously, you swim 2.4 miles, you ride your bike 112 miles, and you run a marathon in one day not like in a year, in one day, and you have to do it in less than 16 hours or you're disqualified. So this sweet lady in our church came up to me. She said, Pastor, I'm praying for you and your Ironman this week. She said, I hope you win. <laughs> I said, what do you mean you, you, you hope I win? She says, well, don't you think you're gonna win? I said, no. <laughs> she said, well, you're the most fit person I know. I said, I'm not racing you. See, that's why they don't let me do counseling. <laughs> She's like, I'm out of here. Listen to me. You know why you're not going to go to heaven apart from Jesus? Because you're not Jesus. You're not getting in. Your friends aren't getting in. Your family's not getting in. Gandhi's not getting in. Mother Teresa's not getting in. Billy Graham's not getting in. The Pope's not getting in unless they follow Jesus. He's the only way. Why? Listen to me, because it's impossible. It's impossible. You can't get there from here apart from Jesus. And that's why we need to share our faith. That's why we need to tell people about Jesus. Even the most successful people, even threes, even the rich young ruler who's tried to do everything right since he was a kid can't get there from here. He says, humanly speaking, it's impossible. But with God, underline this if you're a three, with God... Everything is possible. On your own, you can't do hardly anything, even if you're three. But with God, all things are possible. The three is the achiever. Man. And they reflect God's hope. 
Here's what makes the three unique. Here's why we need to love threes. The beauty of the one is they see, they see how if you just tweak something, it could be better. The one can make things better. They can adjust. The two can serve and make sure that our needs are taken care of and we feel loved and we feel cared for. That's the beauty of the one and the two. Here's the beauty of the three. They don't adjust and they certainly don't serve. Here's the beauty of the three. They're not limited to what we see in the world. They see things that aren't. Tammy and I, we went to Washington, D.C. And if if you're married, take notes. Here's how you enjoy vacations as married couples. You talk about, honey, what would you like to do? And then hopefully she'll ask, what would you like to do? And then you both get to do what you want to do, okay? So in DC, you can't do everything. There's just just not enough time. So my wife really wanted to see the Hope Diamond. Now for a three, that's torture. Why? Because you can't buy it, you can't afford it, you can never make enough money, it's worth $350 billion, and it's locked up and guarded by guards. So you can't get it. So for a three, that's like a nightmare. Oh, look at this thing I'll never own. (laughs) So my wife said, what's the one thing you wanna see? You know the one thing I wanna see? I wanted to see the airplane that the Wright brothers built. A lot of you guys don't know this, but your life has been affected by these two brothers who, by the way, were bicycle mechanics. At the time, it was believed that flight was impossible. But these two brothers saw something that didn't exist. That's what threes do. They see things that don't exist. They see things that nobody else sees, and they go for what the world says. That's impossible. I read an article in the New York Times about the Wright brothers, and it said this, the Wright brothers are either liars or flyers. How many of you have been on an airplane? They were flyers, they were flyers. Man, this year we celebrated or remembered the 50th year since Martin Luther King was assassinated. He's a three. Why? He had a dream that one day, one day, it wasn't then, it wasn't in the 60s, that one day there wouldn't be drinking fountains for people of color and other drinking fountains for people who are white. He had a dream that one day, people would not be judged based upon the color of their skin, but of the content of their character. That's a three. That's a three. He had a dream, and his dream changed your life, and it changed my life, and it made the world a better place. Threes reflect hope. I see something that no one else sees. What drives them? What's at the core of their heart? Success, one word, gotta be successful. If you got a first grader that wants to buy a suit, that's a three. (laughs) That's a three. Right, their motivation is success. I've got to be successful. I've got to be a big deal. I've got to, it doesn't matter what it is, they gotta be the best. They sell real estate, they gotta sell more than you. They gotta have a nicer car. They, they, they got to have a better looking spouse, better looking kids, better dressed clothes. It doesn't matter what is, whatever the game is, the three has to win and you have to lose. Just so we all understand who we are. Their motivation is to be successful. It can be academics. It can be money. It can be acting, performing, singing, dancing. The three doesn't care what the stage is as long as they're on the stage, right? And you're in the audience appreciating our glory. (laughs) And that's coming from a three on stage right now. (laughs) What's their deep need? What is the underlying need? Their need is to achieve. They gotta leave their mark. They gotta be remembered. And for some of you, that's crazy. Like, why do you care so much about what people think? Because that's what the three cares about. I wanna be read about and remembered. 
I want to make a difference. I want to see my name in lights. I want to be popular. I want to be wealthy. I want to be famous. I've got to achieve. What does the three have to avoid at all costs? One word, failure. Right? Threes, we don't fail. We don't lose. We just ran out of time. We just ran out of time. We can't fail. We can't. Failure is not an option. Not an option. My first Iron Man, a lot of people don't know this. I didn't know this, but a lot of people have a panic attack during the swim during their first Iron Man. Why? Because you put yourself in the water with a bunch of other unhealthy threes. 3,000 others, specifically speaking, and they shoot a gun off and everybody tries to win. Well, what that means is you're gonna get pushed underwater. And I know it's hard for you to believe, but I'm not super big. So I get pushed underwater a lot, and so I felt like I was gonna drown. So I swam over in the first 100 yards, found a boat. What I didn't know is the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts to earn a badge that week were gonna help rescue any swimmers in need. So I swam over to the boat to be rescued, and I put my hand on the boat, which is legal. It's legal for a time. The boat just can't carry you, but they can save you. And I put my hand on the boat, looked up, and I saw a Girl Scout with her vest on, and I thought to myself, I would rather die, and I just let go. (laughs) I I just let go. We are not going to be saved by a Girl Scout. That is not gonna happen. You can sell me cookies. You cannot save my life. Right? I didn't fail. I died trying. How sick is that? I would rather my wife be a widow and my children be orphans than receive help from a Girl Scout earning a badge. You cannot fail. Listen to me. If you're a three, this is why this is so sad. You know what failure actually does is it deepens you and strengthens you. And threes are shallow. We're shallow. We run from things we can't win at. You know how you become a deeper person? By embracing failure, by learning from failure, by experiencing you can't do it all. So threes, right, we're the most driven people on earth. But here's the reality, three. There is a limit to your ability, despite what stupid America says to you. The dumbest thing we tell kids, especially threes, is you can be anything you want. Wrong. Look at my body, look at me. I cannot be an NBA basketball player. Coach, maybe. Okay, genetically, it's not in the cards. What if I told you I wanna be a linebacker? Okay, steroids aren't even gonna help that. I'd be in one play. He's dead. Listen to me, threes, here's the thing. You're going to run into people who are more successful than you. And if you're unhealthy, you'll never be okay with that. No matter how much money you have, someone has more. No matter how good looking you are, there's always somebody better looking. I mean, at least like 100 years ago, you could fool yourself and be the best looking person in your town. Now there's the internet. You're like, oh. (laughs) Ah. You could have been the richest person in your city, but now there's Forbes magazine and you didn't even make the list. They don't even know you exist. Oh! But you gotta embrace that. Three avoids failure. So what do they focus on? Now, if you love a three, pay attention. They focus on goals. Now, here's the thing, listen. If you love a three, don't believe their goals. Never believe their goals. They're moving. A three will lie to you. My goal is to get my PhD. And then when they get it, I will now get another. Because I have to have the most PhDs of anyone on earth ever. A a three will say, once I make a million dollars, I'll be satisfied. Then a million is 10 million. Then 10 million is 100 million. Then 100 million is literally a billion. And then a billion is a trillion. Don't believe their goals. If they're unhealthy, they will never be satisfied. They're insatiable. Their goals are a moving target, a moving target. They're never satisfied, ever. 
But that's what they're focused on. Here's the things I'm going to do with my life. What's their core sin? Now, this is embarrassing because I'm your pastor and I teach you every week. Please come back. (laughs) But here's the core sin of the three. It's lying. They're not honest. Do you know why? Because the truth is painful. You see, the three has such a need to be successful, they have to create lies in order to meet their own standards. Isn't that crazy? Threes are some of the most successful people we know. Many of you look up to threes, listen to threes, follow threes. Your lives have been changed by threes, but they're so insecure in who they are, they lie about their accomplishments because they don't feel like no matter what they accomplish, it's ever enough, so they lie to everybody, including themselves. Why? Because their fear is being worthless. Listen to me, if I don't have nice clothes, who am I? If I don't drive the best car, who am I? When Tammy and I first got married, our car payment was more than our house payment. Yeah, I'm an idiot. We bought dogs. Not only do I need a dog, I gotta have a big dog, bigger than your dog. I don't have the money to feed the big dog, doesn't matter, I'm a three. My dog will eat your dog. (laughs) It's stupid. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? Here's what I was doing with my life. I'm all about image. Why? Because the core, core issue, the underlying emotion of the three is shame. If I don't have my clothes, you won't love me. If I don't drive this car, you won't date me. If I don't have this house, you won't come over. If I'm not successful, you won't care about me. I won't matter to you. You see, the fear of the three is, if you really knew me, you wouldn't love me. You wouldn't want to be my friend. You wouldn't celebrate me. This is why so many actors in Hollywood go crazy, because they're threes. And here's what they believe. Once I become famous, then I'll be satisfied. And then they become famous, and they're miserable. I followed the career of Jim Carrey, and I looked at one of his quotes this week. He said, I wish somebody would have told me when I was young that wealth and fame wouldn't satisfy me. The problem is the three doesn't listen to that. They believe the lie. And if you follow Jim Carrey, you know he's gone nuts. Because that's what happens. No amount of success can ever cover your shame. Only the blood of Jesus can. Don't chase your dreams. Chase the cross. Run to the cross. Because only the cross can deal with what is wrong inside of you. So how on earth does a three need to be real? The three needs to be real with himself. Psalms 119, 29. Keep me from lying to whom? Myself. If you're a three, you lie to yourself more than anybody else. You're not honest about how you feel, what you've done, or where you're going. You're not honest. Keep me from lying to myself. Give me the privilege of knowing your instructions. You see, Here, right, the one has an internal moral compass. They know what's right. The three has no compass. So the three needs God's word. See, if you're a three, you got to drive, but you got no steering wheel. God's word is a steering wheel to control where you take that drive. And without God's word, you're going to be lost and you're going to destroy yourself. Listen to me. If you're a three, your dream may be your nightmare. It may be the very thing God came to save you from. That's why I hate it when people go to these churches where they literally hear these sermons that God came to fulfill your dreams. Man, when I read God's word, much of what God's doing is trying to save us from our dream. I mean, some of you have got what you always wanted. How is it? It's a mess. See, somebody had a dream. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. You will know the truth and the truth will what? Set you free. Listen to me, if you're a three, the facts are your friends. Never stray 
from the facts. You can lie to yourself. Let's go back to the rich young ruler. Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What does Jesus say? Why do you call me good? But to answer your question, you know the commandments. Yes, I do, Lord, and I have obeyed them perfectly ever since I was a little kid because I'm a three and I'm successful at everything I do. Hmm. Does anybody know what the first commandment is? Thou shalt have no other gods but me. And so what does Jesus do? He calls out what he worships, stuff. Oh, you've mastered all 10. Well, why don't we start with number one? What's number two? Thou shalt have no idols. Ooh, what are you bowing down to? Your car, your house, your clothes, your image? How we doing? Why don't we really call it out? Why don't you sell everything you have, then come and follow me, then you'll have treasure in heaven. And the man walked away from ultimate success. Why? Because he'd been very successful. He lied to himself, listen to me threes, and he went to hell. He went to hell. But he had a lot of stuff. How are you to be real with others? James 5, 16. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be what? Healed. Listen to me, threes. Confession is your friend. Confession is your friend. You gotta learn to tell people, yeah, you know that story I told? That's not true, that's not what happened. Here's what happened. Here's what's going on. Confess your sins one to another. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Threes, you want your prayer life to change? You need to change and start confessing. How should you be real with God? The Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. Now some of you don't know the story, but here's the issue. Israel had a king, his name was Saul. We're gonna talk about him next week. But Saul blew it, and Israel needed a new king. So God called his prophet Samuel, and he said, I want you to go to the house of Jesse. Jesse has a bunch of sons, bunch of sons. Statistically, having more than 12 boys in a row is, is literally a miracle in and of itself. Jesse has all these sons. Boom, 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 boom. And so Jesse lines them up, literally from the oldest to the youngest, from the tallest to the shortest. And God says, don't you dare look at how they appear. God says, I don't give a rip how you look on the outside. I care about who you are on the inside. And here's what Samuel says to Jesse. There's a son that's missing. Where is David? And Jesse says, little David? Yes, little David. He's out in the field. I didn't think God would be interested in him. And that's the very son God chose to be the king of Israel. Don't judge by appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance. Yes, especially threes. But the Lord looks at the heart, and that's where the three doesn't want to go because of shame. So how on earth do you love a three? With a helmet. Be careful. Number one, you've got to encourage them to celebrate success. Do you know why that is? Threes are so forward thinking they can't ever celebrate what God did. Literally, this week, my wife and I had a quick conversation. She had all of my Iron Man medals. You know what I told her? She said, throw those away. She says, I'm not going to throw these away. She says, we're going to mount them on the wall. I was like, why would you do that? She said, because they're a big deal. It's crazy to me. Threes are terrible at celebrating success. Listen to me. Here's why you need to celebrate, because it reminds the three of what God did. 
In the Old Testament, it's called an Ebenezer. We're going to put a big stone here of remembrance, and we're going to remember what God did. Threes are so focused on the future, they screw up the present. A three is so goal-oriented, they'll miss a birthday party. You got to tell a three, our kids matter, and you will be here. You will be here. You see, a three will change the world and lose their family. You hear about a lot of these great people who did amazing things and they were terrible husbands and worse fathers. Listen to me, threes. Who you are really is who you are in the home. Next, how to love a three. You gotta be real with them. It's hard, threes are tough. They're overwhelming, they're big personalities. They're tough to compete with. You've got to be real with them. One of the greatest moments in my life was the, one of the worst moments in my life. Tammy and I had a fight, we had an argument, and I'm not proud of this, but it ended up with her locked in a bathroom in our house. The best way to fight with a three is with a door in between you. This is what I said, I'm not proud of this, this is what I yelled through the door. Why is it, Tammy, that everyone in the world, quite a statement, thinks I'm amazing, but you, And I heard her say from the other side of the door, she said, because nobody knows the real you like I do. <laughs> do you know why she said what she said? Because when I'm on stage, I'm on stage. But when I'm at home, that's who I am. Listen to me, threes. What good is it if you inherit the whole world, but you lose your soul, you lose your family, you lose your friends? As a three, you can be the most popular person in the world. You can have 100,000 followers on Twitter and not a friend in the world. You see, as a three, you can be the most popular and the most lonely because you're fake. You're not real. Anybody wondering why God would call me to plant a church whose vision was to be real with self, God, and others? <laughs> Number three, how to love a three. You just got to accept they're a little nuts. They just are, they're, they're, a little, they're a little off. Can you imagine if you're the right brother's mom? Boys, what are you going to do with your life? We're going to fly. We're going to fly. Uh, like a bird? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right? What, what, that's nuts. Right? If God wanted you to fly, he would have given you wings. Well, we're going to make our own wings. Threes are just a little off. Threes do stupid things. Like on their vacation, they do Ironmans. That's like, yeah, somebody got that. Yeah. For, for, for most normal people, right? Vacation involves an umbrella, sand, and a Corona. For a three, it involves suffering and vomiting and other liquids. Yes. Right? Number four, this is huge. You have to encourage them to connect with how they're feeling. Do you know why? They don't deal with the heart. That's scary. Tammy and I went to counseling a year and a half ago for her. She was struggling. I'd been praying, you know, that God would speak to her. So we went to counseling. You know, I, I, was, I was convinced God was going to do something amazing in her life. So it's three, three days of counseling with two, two counselors, eight hours a day. And Tammy's sharing her story, and I'm waiting for God to move. Um, well, because I wanted to be successful, right? And so the counselors just periodically would stop looking at her and look at me, and they would ask this question, how are you feeling? I was like, great, this is great, this is great. Hmm. Then they would say, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Day two, hour four, I started getting eye twitch. <laughs> I'm, not exa I'm, I'm serious, I'm just like, I, 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 why do you keep asking me that? So Tammy and I go to lunch. You know, and the counseling's not, it's not having a big impact on her, so I'm a little frustrated, you know. <laughs> we go to lunch. And I ordered a salad, that's all I remember. And I started crying. What is this? 
Those are feelings. <laughs> and the rest of the time, we just focus on me. It was crazy. And I asked the counselor, I said, why do you keep asking me questions? We're here for her. He said, you're a three. You don't know how you feel. He said, you're completely disconnected from your feelings. You're so focused on being successful, you can't deal with the emotional failure and pain of your life. I'm like, <laughs> oh, the hormone pills. I'm really not on hormone pills. It just sounds funny. <laughs> so encourage them. Hey, man, that's, that's, great. that's great. Sandals baptized 519 people last weekend. That's great. It's great. How does it make you feel? I think I need to baptize you. That's how it makes me feel. You got to connect with your heart. Threes are scared to death of feelings. Why? They're not, they don't always work out successfully. Number five, thank them specifically. I appreciate your hard work in this. I appreciate that you do this. Make them stop and pause and let them know that you appreciate not just what they do, but you appreciate them. All right? Because what's the three's fear? I don't matter to you. All that matters is what I do for you. That's the three's relational fear. And if I'm no longer able to produce the money I make, to produce the lifestyle that we live, no one will love me. And you've got to reassure the three that you do. We love you, not just the lifestyle you provide or the entertainment that you give. You're more than what you do. So how do we pray for the three? Here's the three's prayer. God, help me to find success in you. Help me to strive for obedience as I strive for success. I love this verse. May integrity and honesty protect me, for I put my hope in you, God. Listen, if you're a three, you're beautiful and you're a gift to our church, but your integrity must match your intensity. You must close the gap between your calling and your character, and it is a lifelong struggle. Because as a three, you will do great things for God or for the devil. Your choice, my prayer is that you choose to do great things for God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for threes. We love them. Lord, they, they change our lives. They make such incredible differences in the world. God, they see things that we don't see. God, I pray as they pursue success, Lord, that they would have a heart to pursue you over and above everything else. God, let them pursue obedience. And God, match their integrity, Lord, with their ability. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you so much, Sandals Church. God bless.